Hey guys, welcome to my humbled little shed, my little race shop. Um, we're going to start trying to capture a little bit more footage this year. Um, a lot of people would know that I built my own car, but I think a lot of people don't as well. So I'm going to show you guys how you can build some competitive stuff yourself at home and keep up with the best around Australia. Today we're looking at my new built motor, um, fresh from Bullet Engineering. It's just one of their um, wet engines. I was running one of their previous build engines for the last couple of years, but yeah, I ended up blowing it up in the last round. Dropped about, did a heap of damage. We might bring that engine back, we'll see how we go, but this new engine's gonna be awesome. We've got a heap of new parts, got a heap of sponsors and stuff on board. Um, big thanks and shout out to ACL Bearing for coming off this one, and also Engine Rico uh, in Launceston. So, take you guys through what we do to get this thing together and make it live pretty much all year, last year, right? Um, with a 900 horsepower almost 10,000 RPM SR20. Oh, the SR's, it's perfect. The engine of choice, I think, really. <laughs> come from Simmons. Um, that's my local track from Tassie, so kind of like the fast big entry of this. We will wait and find out with a huge amount of angle thrown in. Brody Mayer took out our round number one. No surprise there. Yep. Two from two so far. Brody Mayer now leading the championship. Championship winner for 2022, Brody Mayer from Tasmania. All right, so we just picked up the block from Engine Rico and Bars, and I've done all the machining. We run this thing as like almost a 2.4 litre, it's like a 2.35, so she's got some big pistons and we had to take it out like massively in the bore. Done a pretty good job cleaning it, but unfortunately like, just reality is like a lot more time has to be spent cleaning all the galleries out, and just getting into everywhere to make sure that we have like absolutely no debris in the engine. It's probably like the least fun part of the whole job, but you'll probably spend like 90% of your time measuring, re-measuring and like cleaning this thing out. So even like a quarter of a thou, on your big ends, like makes a pretty big difference. So we'll just go back through, double check everyone's work, and we'll start putting this thing together. All right, so we just finished the super tedious job of following down all the rings. If you've done it, you know what I'm talking about, one foul at a time, but come up really well. So there's definitely one of those jobs where patience is key. You definitely don't want to take too much, but we're also running pretty big wing gaps because really don't want those things to bust. Super nice little combo, which we're pairing with our 90 mil uh, custom SPS pistons. We've been running these pistons for a little while now, um, and they've actually stepped up to a new thousand horsepower out of the wheel design. So definitely keen to see how this goes, but it's definitely a pretty stout little piston uh, made right here in Melbourne. So uh, pretty keen to keep it local. Continuing on, we've got a local Nitto rod, which we've paired up with a 625 plus bolt. Uh, I beam design and a custom pin bush. I had a little bit of trouble keeping pin bushes in the motor um, just because it's dry sump and it's scavenging so much. There's no like oil sort of in the crankcase. Um, we don't run oil squirters either. So come with a nice little combo which makes this work. It's a little bit different than what we've run previously, but my tune is definitely um, pretty determined these are the parts to go. So keen to see what we can put together. We're also running a 92 mil crank. Um, same cranks had on the old engine has been ultra reliable, so we're just kind of keen to keep going on with it. So we've finished our final clean. We've done a few dummy assemblies and measured everything up. Everything's come up really well. Um, as it turned out, with our main bearings, like we didn't have to run them really tight with these built blocks, just because the expansion rate's so big, uh, open up so much. So we've actually had to split uh, a set of bearing shells with like an undersize on one side and an oversize on the other, just to get the clearance that we want. Nothing sketchy about it, um, but just a good little handy hand if you guys ever need to kind of um, split the difference and um, get your clearances and you don't actually have to grind the crank. We're running the five hole GDIR uh, mains in this um, and some calico coated 19mm uh, ACL uh, big ends. <laughs> just a secret sauce. One thing I find super interesting about these billet blocks, you only actually run water from like the top two inches of the block, and that's actually all you need for sufficient cooling. So we're just zeroing in our rod bolt stretching gauge. Just a heaps more accurate way of um, setting your torque. 
But these bad boys, normally 6 thou's about the number. I'm just shimming this head up at the moment. Um, it's the first head I've had uh, where like all the valves heights like pretty much the same. So the shims are actually coming up pretty much all the same size, which is really cool. Um, but it's obviously a super critical part of making the engine work really well. We're actually running the SR20 VE P11 head. Uh, a little hype about the P12 head, but honestly the P11 is just better. So we just finished prepping up some of these rocker arms. So I pulled all of the fingers out of them. Uh, we run this engine as like a VVL killer package and it's just a little more reliable like that. Uh, pro tip for you guys, when you get your VE head done, obviously these things are like in the engine bay normally and they're east-west and we put them in north-south, the rails come out the back. So get your Welsh plug smacked out the front, get her all tapped and that way you can actually pull the rocker arm rails straight out the front. So when you've got this thing in a rear-wheel drive application, really easy to the rocking arms out. Uh, this is actually my first non-standard head. So our motor used to just run the standard port, standard valve. Uh, so this head's actually a full CNC port head uh, with custom Ferrero valves. So it should make a bit more power, but honestly I'm just keen for a nice reliable um, 900 horsepower all year. We'll just finish like banging these last few shims in um, and then we'll get on to the bottom end. All right boys, hot tip number two. I don't know if you're getting out these hot tips, but anyway, here we are. I'm all for you boys. Let's build them at home. Let's take it up for these big boys. As it turns out, a KTM 1190 Adventure road bike actually runs the same shim as you will your VE. So any 10 mil shim will work, but this has a good range from 1.8 to 3.2, which is exactly what you'll need. And they come with like a heap of different shims. So snap them up. I think before COVID tax, it was like 80 bucks each. So maybe even just buy two. So we actually run these little cap shims uh, on the exhaust side. Found, especially when drifting, there's a lot of back pressure in the exhaust, particularly because you don't want to run too big of a turbocharger. Um, so your EMAP ends up pretty bad up top. And then when you hit on limiter, things just get worse. So it's pretty hard to make this head to not valve flow, especially when you're running to 9,500. So we are running pretty big exhaust springs. But these little shims here just stop any potential for valve float to have happen. Well, they don't actually stop valve float, but if valve float actually occurs, you won't spit a shim. Um, might even edit in a bit of a clip, but in 2019, I was running against Yukoi, one of, yeah, like my idols growing up, MCR factory, right? And the battle against him at World Time Attack, I spat a shim. So, thought we had the VE, thought we had the good rocker arms, the rails, nothing could happen, you know, but shims will still come out of these. Yukoi yeah, and Brody Mayer, Masashi Yukoi up front row. Oh, that's an example of just how much speed. That. The thing's just a missile, Moss. It's, like, it's just a missile being fired off the line. He is so fast, and you just see what the chase driver has to do there. Just he came across, and he was—I think he was just trying to. I think something's gone wrong with the car. I think there's a mechanical. Or was it? Was that a noise? These little cap shims are a cheap warranty, and all you need to do to fit them is just machine down the lips on the edge. Since they're for GDIR, it's a little bit of a different valve length, and they will hit on the collar. So you just need to take them down to about 1.5 mil, down from three. So. Lucky I know some guys that are machinists. I know how to use a sander and um, put them down. We ended up with a small bear on the inside, so lucky we've got the uh, drill press set up. Can't be leaving Doug hanging. Ready up. So we've just got together our short motor. Uh, we just got the pistons back. There's actually a little bit of a clearance issue that made the piston a little bit too thick under the base of like the crown. And we couldn't actually get the cone rods through to get like the gadget pins through it. Uh, we'll clearance them all up, rebalance them, and just got this short motor together. So work that on it now.
So we just fitted the head up and I'm just like, I'm tying the cams. Honestly, this tool makes the job really easy. Get yourself exactly where you need to be. Every block's a little bit different, so it's really good to have your cam dolling wheel because honestly, all the power and response to these motors comes from cam timing and I'm running a pretty aggressive um, cam timing setup on this to bring the engine on super early. Advanced hand intake really helps a lot, especially with drifting, getting this thing in um, early and also like sounds wicked. So. All right guys, so we're jumping ahead a little bit. Things haven't really gone to plan, but I guess they really ever do. We actually got this car on the dyno in the morning, so this thing has come together pretty quickly. And yeah, we had to take the day off work just to smash it out. Probably nothing super exciting worth mentioning, but one cool little addition for this one is we're actually running some additional oil feeds into the back of the head. Hope that helps a little bit with cam wear. These things being like a direct contact head can be fairly tricky to try and keep the rocker arms and the camshafts happy, especially with some big RPM and valve springs going on. But I'm gonna keep trucking on and get this thing in. Get it started tonight and hopefully no more drummies. Bustling pretty hard to get this engine in at the moment. Things didn't go exactly to plan while getting the engine in. Uh, we had to make some slightly different mounts to hang this block because it's a little bit different to the last one. And yeah, I built a new trans tunnel for this year, hopefully making the whole install heaps easier. Anyway, it definitely is easier, but at the same time, probably hasn't been ideal. So you probably saw some uh, pretty, pretty wrenching going on trying to get that thing in there. But if we make a couple of adjustments, hopefully next year we'll be able to make it a little bit easier. So we're getting pretty close to getting this thing started. I made a few new dry sump lines and stuff up this week. So I'm just gonna use a dry sump pump to pump some of the oil through. Um, we'll probably like pump a litre or so out of it. And um, then put the line back on, make sure we get oil pressure, pull the rock cover off, make sure we've got like even spread out all our little cam lobes and then we'll try and get a fire in this thing. So, I've just got oil pressure up. We're just checking all the oil squirters through the rail. Like we cleaned all this stuff beforehand, same as the uh, lines before I should have mentioned. But still, sometimes you get a little bit of debris through some stuff. So this oil squirter here is probably not quite squirting as well as I'd like. So run some brake clean through it, put a little bit of pressure through it, bit of air, see if it's something jam in the hole and then we'll put it back in. I honestly think if you can't just stand in your engine way like this and work on it, probably got too big of an engine. She's gonna go. So it's been a long few nights, but we've got the motor in for its first start. The thing sounds super healthy, so. Really excited, we've got this thing going to the dyno tomorrow, so we can see how it goes, but fingers crossed. So this really isn't how we wanted to finish our first video. Um, I think the last content we sort of filmed was us getting the car started, and we got it to the dyno. Uh, the car ran for like maybe 60 seconds up there. We really didn't want to run the engine like at all because we want to glaze a bore up, and the tune up was obviously going to be like way out. So we were literally putting water in it, it started ticking a little bit, and we dropped a valve. So pretty unfortunate news on the uh, fresh engine build. Obviously we sort of film this as like a, we know what we're doing building motors, but you know, maybe we don't, maybe you should be listeners, maybe you shouldn't. But anyway, we got a little bit lucky. Obviously when it's dropped a valve, the engine was actually only idling, so it's kind of done minimal damage. We found some interesting stuff. Um, actually what's happened but we might actually save that for the next video so well then this one here got um one freshly marked up piston a bit of a hammered head the head's not here because we're on like a super tight deadline to make it to the track we're actually meant to have been at the track what like three days ago yeah three days ago obviously didn't make that um but now we're running really tight to get this thing on the boat so tune in hopefully we'll make it to high tech in this car if not we might have to revert to another car but i'm trying really hard to get this together so 
that we found and um, kept you guys posted.